Let me talk to you a little bit about the Timucua brand of social entrepreneurship and uh, social action through life, you know? All right, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you in, in about 10, 12 minutes the history, the story of uh, how we came to be and how it ca this, this thing, this phenomenon came to happen. And hopefully we'll tell you a little bit about what it is too, so you'll f be curious enough to uh, come to the house if you have not been yet. So uh, this whole thing started, first of all, let me tell you a little bit who I am. So uh, I'm a musician, a conductor. Uh, I, I play several instruments, but I play trumpet. And uh, I was a studio musician in Montreal for many, many years. And I taught at McGill University uh, for a decade um, in the jazz department. But I do all kinds of music. I'm, you know, I'm not a... Genre has always been uh, wide for me. Like I've I've played a lot of blues and and uh, R and B and all kinds of stuff, Latin music of all kinds. Uh, I I often say that I've done every kind of wedding you can imagine, from Ethiopian weddings, Greek wedding, like every like every kind of music that can be played at a wedding, I've played it. So anyhow, so uh, in 1996, um, Sig Soleil called me to do O in Vegas. He said, oh, we'd like you to be the conductor for O in Vegas. I used to conduct like uh, award shows on television, stuff like that, so I was a conductor, you know? And so um, I said, no thanks. <laughs> and I hung up the phone because I, ha I, I hate Vegas uh, with a passion. And so, uh, but a couple of months later, I read in the paper they were opening a show in Orlando. Uh, and so I said, uh, I picked up the phone, I called the same guy, I said, hey, I'll do Orlando. He says. What a coincidence, we're talking about the position right now, I'm on my way to a meeting. And so that afternoon I had the job here in Orlando. The thing is, of course, is that I, have, I had a wife and three kids. Uh, this is once we were here already, but uh, the young one was nine months old when we moved here. And so um, what happened is that uh, in Montreal, if you've ever been there, the, the arts and cultural or culture scene is not at all like it is or certainly not like it was here 20 years ago. And so, uh, and to give you an idea, there are more musicians in the union book in Montreal than there are in Manhattan. And so Montreal is one-tenth of what Manhattan is, and yet there's about three, four hundred more musicians in the, in, who play professionally than there are in Manhattan. So it's a very, very active. So for example, you can be walking, depending on the season, but you can be walking on one of the main streets and every second door is there's going to be live music and or art and or art and music together happening every day and night of the week and bars don't close till like, or the last call is at three o'clock in the morning. So, you know, it's kind of like a, it's a long, uh, longer day than we have here. So my typical day when I was in Orlando, which is why I took the job here in Orlando with Cirque du Soleil, is because I was going seven days. Uh, oftentimes I was on tour. When school was not in session, I was on tour. When school was in session, I was teaching. Uh, I was doing jingles and such and st studio sessions in the morning, teaching in the afternoon and early evening, then playing clubs over like at night. And then usually doing my writing, arranging and stuff that I had to produce during the night. And so, and I made a decent living, but it was, you know, I couldn't possibly see my kids grow with that kind of schedule on long term, right? It's just not possible. So I was happy to come here. Now, what we found here felt to us like a cultural desert. And so... <laughs> uh, <laughs> So we decided to do something about it. Like, in other words, the, um, we couldn't find any, any live music either to watch or to play. Like, it took us months. M my days off used to be Tuesday and Wednesday uh, the fir at the beginning of the run. And so even worse, right? <laughs> Tuesday and Wednesday, there's just like nothing going on because there are slow nights uh, on the weekly schedule in a, in a town. Like nothing, nobody books anything important on Tuesday or Wednesday, or used to anyways, it's getting better. So we uh, organized one concert at our house. This was our suburban home in South Orlando, 
um, and I arranged the Goldberg variations, box Goldberg variations, for the band that's six. So there's my uh, bass player playing cello. I was playing trumpet, of course. My wife uh, right now is on piano, but my pianist played some things also. And then uh, my saxophone player played English horn, so he played English horn. And then my violin, my violinist is of course playing violin. And so um, what happened was, first of all, we had like 20 people in the house. Like that's it. The audience was barely any bigger than this. And um, what happened is people said, okay, when's the next one? And uh, there were some musicians in the house and says, oh, when can I play? And so, okay, we'll do another one. And then before, this was September 21st, I believe, uh, 2000. And before Christmas, this was a monthly thing. And then before May, it was a bi-monthly thing. And then before the end of the year, it was every week. And so uh, clearly there was a need for a place where music came first, not to support the food and beverage industry or the pressure of selling tickets or making money for somebody, right? So the musicians loved that because they could do whatever they wanted. They could play the music they wanted. They could also uh, try new things. For example, play with people they've never played before. Uh, for example, I played with an Indian musician for the first time, like centaur and trumpet, like, you know, and, and something I might not have tried if money was on the line, right? Like experimentation. And so uh, also people, let's say before they went in the recording studio or they want, like, let's try this. Let's see what works, what doesn't work in an environment that has zero pressure because it's in somebody's living room, right? Um, and then very soon after, This is like the, like local musicians. So these are local musicians. Per Danielson, when he had no gray hairs, and I had no gray hairs at the time either. Uh, but so and and very soon after, Tiger Okoshi came to play at the house, and he was the first like international name that we had. Like that was in 2002, maybe something like that. Uh, and then it's kind of snowballed from there. So things just happened. So we started this without a big vision. Like, it, it was, was just like a simple fix to a simple problem. And then things started to happen. And basically, we were led by, like, events, right? Like, we didn't, we weren't leading. We were just letting ourselves, like, going with the flow of this where was, this was going. And, um, you know, so whether classical, jazz, avant-garde music, uh, singer-songwriters, I played sometimes, and now you're starting to see some artwork. And very soon after, like, I started g getting some uh, show lighting, you know, to really frame the artwork. But all of this came because, basically, I said, oh, we need to do this. And the, the art came because we did, uh, my wife teaches piano, and she did the recital of her students, and one of her students' mom taught art visual arts and to some of the kids. And so she says, oh, wouldn't it be nice if we could show the kids artwork while they play? And it's the same kids playing piano and learning to paint and stuff. So let's do that. And so I said, wow, that what a great idea. Let's do it all the time. And so <laughs> contacting artists, cold calling. And at that time, still, like in the first like four or five years, I was cold calling artists and uh, at that time, um, a lot of animation was still happening in Orlando for Disney. So a lot of visual artists lived here who worked there full time. So that complemented the unique music scene that there is here, that there's always been or for many years, in that there's a lot of, like, it's a, Orlando is a small town, small city, but a, a lot of uh, steady work for musicians. But what was lacking was this place where music could be played for music's sake, right? So that people could play what they want. Like musicians in Orlando are always told what to play, when to play it, where to play it, what to dress when they're playing, all that kind of stuff. And so this was a chance for musicians to play what they want in the environment that is, was maybe uh, suited for that. Now, these things grew pretty quickly, but the house where we lived wasn't growing. <laughs> so I had to uh, tore, tear down some walls and things, try to make some room. So it, it's hard to see on this, on the screen. Um, but basically, you saw the image before where there was a wall there and the wall no longer was there. So 
and I took the opportunity to route a uh, audio snake up the chimney through the attic to a back bedroom. So I put all three kids in the same room. So I used like bunk beds and I modified the bunk beds so that all three kids, they shared a room and the other room was my control room. So I, I started recording everything pretty early on. In fact, you saw the Sony MS mic, the very first concert, I recorded it. And so um, this is, the, my wife luckily went along with all that stuff. Um, this is my kids. So the kids used to open every concert. What are my, uh, no matter what style of music was being played, the kids would play something in that style. And so this was to open for a jazz concert. So uh, we played one of my jazz ballads, uh, my compositions. I played trumpet and Charles uh, was eight years old. He played the bass. Camille is playing piano and singing. Uh, she's six years old there. And then our four-year-old is on drums. And so uh, that just gives you, and then we, as, lo as long as we could until they went their all, all, you know, to college in different states and now uh, Camille is in Scotland, like it's harder to do now, obviously. Um, so they, they played several instruments each so that if it were, for example, if Baroque was the, the style of the night, uh, he played violin, she played viola, he played cello. And my, we have a harpsichord, my, my wife plays harpsichord and I play trumpet, so there you go. We have a, a nice Baroque quintet right there. And so we could do really um, pretty, uh, pretty much anything. Plus, the, you know, the kids got to learn how to play salsa and Indian music and free jazz and all that kind of stuff before uh, uh, they were uh, very old. Now, the place where we used to live was in, in the Timucua neighborhood in Hunters Creek. And so uh, it was on Timucua Court, uh, right by Timucua Lake uh, and Timucua Circle. So we called our nonprofit the Timucua Arts Foundation because it made sense. And later on, we found uh, artifacts, Indian artifacts, when we built the new place. And so um, it made even more sense. Because, of course, the Timucua was, were very, uh, uh, food was plentiful and they were very creative and they didn't have to fight a lot for food. So. Uh, they left a lot of uh, artifacts. And ours weren't Timucua artifacts, they were probably Seminole artifacts, but uh, anyways. So uh, before, uh, in 2004, this was not the event, it was a Brazilian event, but the first Brazilian, we had like probably like 120 people in the house, like things grew too much, right? So we found wine glass, like I was walking with the kids around the lake and we found wine glasses on the other side of the lake in the neighborhood. I said, okay, this is, We've got to either pull back on the concerts or uh, design and build a place that's more suitable for these concerts, which is exactly what we decided to do. So we put our entire life savings into this house, which we built. Uh, we moved in there in 2007 uh, by Boone High School, so not far from here, close to downtown. And for us, more importantly, um, there's a street in the front, a street in the back. So parking is, is, is good. There's a park with a parking lot, community center with a parking lot. So parking is not an issue. Parking definitely was an issue at the other place where parking, people would park all around the lake, you know? So like sometimes they would have to walk quite a bit to get to the house. And so this is, uh, shows you a little bit the method of construction. This, these are uh, ICF, so they're uh, uh, styrofoam forms that you pull, you, you uh, pour, uh, uh, reinforced concrete in uh, and we did this for sound but this was a method of construction that, that was already popular this was the first house built like that in Orlando but uh, in Canada very popular because of its insulating properties but here for 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 us for sound insulation properties very very good uh, so we I went all out I spent more in the windows in the new house than the other house cost because there are hurricane laminate windows, better soundproofing. There's also a bigger gap in between with argon, and the glazing on the inside is also um, thicker than normal. Like I went all out. These, the guys who installed these windows had never, in 22 years of experience, never installed that model. They needed a crane to hoist the windows, they were too heavy. So uh, the brick, I tried, you may recognize the brick from an earlier picture, because I tried that brick in the other house, and I, found, I, I really like the sound of how it diffuses. I really like this beautiful sounding brick. The wood is cypress in the room. You can't see that there, but you'll see it later. Uh, I shiplapped the wood um, and I wanted cedar, but cedar, because I knew cedar, this, this is my third 
acoustic space. So I, this was not my first uh, design concept. I'm a trumpet player, but I'm an amateur designer and engineer, whatever. Um, so, uh, but Cypress, I figure, would be close. And so we found a place uh, to mill it locally. So it was all done locally. It's pretty good. So um, here you have uh, the late Larry Coriel, you know, internationally known jazz guitarist, playing with uh, two Indian musicians. And we get compliments from the acoustics of the house uh, from people from all over the world. Now, early on, like as, actually, as soon as we moved into the new house, I installed cameras, so I started filming everything. And I'm give, I give the videos to the performers for free, and it gives them a pretty powerful uh, economic development tool for them because it's something that's valuable. I, I make a little trailer, usually a two-minute trailer, and the entire thing, and I give it to them. People who have played to the house can attest to that. Uh, and, you know, the quality gets better. I, I, I get good gear as, as much as I can. But we started the visual artist working live on stage at that time, too. So that added another dimension, because all of a sudden, and that happened for the first time at the old house, where the guy set up in the backyard and just had this big, big canvas. And he was like doing like oil painting, but with, like with a uh, blowtorch. So it was like very tortured. And he would like staple things, like bolts and things, and like as uh, piercings. And like he was a portrait. And it was very tortured stuff. And then at the end of the, uh, when the concert was over, he, he called everybody outside. And he says, OK, everybody take pictures now. And then he set the thing ablaze. OK? So I said, wow, this is cool. I want an, an, a live artist all the time. So that's what we started doing. And this, by the way, is Soliman Tekali with his sister uh, um, uh, Jamila on piano. He's a, they're both very high level musicians. Um, and uh, he's won like multiple competitions international competitions in Korea, in Japan, everywhere. And uh, he's actually, he, he's, uh, he was asked to audition for the Minnesota uh, Orchestra as their concertmaster, which is unheard of. Nobody gets ever asked to, to uh, audition for a, a post like that. So from the get-go, we were pushing living composers, so new music, right? So whether, you know, singer-songwriters, new music, OK. If you, if you have covers, you have new music, oh yeah, we always pushed the new stuff, right? And so it led to us becoming, uh, pretty short order, the busiest new music venue in Florida. And we have, we stopped counting at 3,000 world premieres at the house. So that's pretty cool. It's busier than any other place in Florida, with, including universities who teach composition and presumably premiere their compositions at their venue every year. So now we can fit a big band on stage. Um, we actually have a proper stage. So it's not ideal. It's a little bit tight, but it works. Um, and we have like four distinct series so that everybody can find an event they like at least once a month. So we have like a classical series. That, so Sunday nights are now our main, main concerts. Okay, so. It's pay what you want or self-determined ticket price. So we make it uh, you know, accessible to anybody. Uh, the house is also wheelchair accessible. And we're improving that as we go as far as like the, even like the slope on the driveway and everything. We try and make, get it better. So we'll, we're working on make it as, 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 as accessible as, ev uh, as ever on every uh, uh, front. Um, so classical, jazz. Latin slash world slash folk is one category, and then alternative is the other category, which includes theater, poetry, literary events, um, spoken word, that kind of stuff. So, and unclassifiable music, sometimes we'll put it on there, especially if it includes spoken word. So, um, and those are our Sunday nights. Now, we also have our, ma each series has master concerts or master events, or master series events, those are usually weeknights. And so, uh, for example, this Saturday night is uh, Alterity is opening their new season with uh, uh, at the house, and it's a small ensemble. It's a, uh, I guess it's a sextet, so percussion, flute, clarinet, violin, cello, and piano, uh, and it's all new music, uh, with all living composers. Um, so, again, uh, just kind of an example of the uh, eclectic uh, nature of what we do. And uh, we have a Brazilian 
on, on the piano here, Weber Iago. He's from Serbia, uh, Christoph Vizchev, Viz, Vizchev, and then he's actually from Florida, uh, Christian Tambour on Vibes. Um, so for a long time now, we've been um, encouraging people to do uh, multidisciplinary projects. So things that involve uh, like projection, digital art with music, uh, interactive things, all that kind of stuff and also international cooperation. So now we have uh, a Swedish trumpeter playing with local musicians, and that uh, just uh, gives you a, a... And of course, every year, we're the first stop on the tour for One Beat, which is a uh, State Department project, uh, along with Bang on a Can, Found Sound Nation, uh, and they go to Atlantic Center for the Arts. They bring mus musicians from all over the world. So usually it's uh, 12, 12 musicians, I think, from everywhere, and I'm not kidding everywhere and then they get they, they spend three weeks together like inventing new ways of playing music and new music and then they come to the house and then they go out to the rest of the the, the us um, and that's pretty cool our latin series has become very important and so this is where um you know we have like basically we we started you know the hispanic people form about almost 40% of the, of the population now after Maria, and yet they don't get nearly that much in return as far as the cultural offerings from the city. And so we try to um, improve on that uh, a lot. Here's a Brazilian group. We're limited by the fire marshal to 100 seats now. So uh, since we've gotten our, our official, I, I did this all without asking permission. So we did that after the fact, after a few years, so that they couldn't say no to us. Um, but uh, there's a few caveats, and one of them was like, because you know that concert you saw with uh, Larry Coriel and the two Indian musicians, there were close to 200 people in the house. There were people sitting on the floor, in the stairs, all the way down, like possibly not the safest of situations. So the fire marshal is limiting us to 100 seats, which is fine. We do that. But once in a while, we reach that. And so it's recommended that you should uh, RSVP so that it kind of reserves your seat. Also, if you become a mem member, it's $10 a month to be a member. You will actually get to choose your seat. You get, you get seated first at the beginning of events. Not everything we do is at the house. We go to unusual places. This is an unused a retail space that was a whole uh, marathon concert of new music and that was like the uh, digital real-time depiction of the sounds you know uh, basically digital art created by the music we also have people working on uh, for example putting uh, sensor motion sensors on 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 dancers and uh, basically compose music by a computer via algorithms that are triggered by the motion sensor. So in essence, the dancer is composing the music, which is pretty cool. Um, but the, the living room, this is the living room seen from the stage, still remains at the heart of what we do. It's very important to us. And um, so uh, basically, uh, we try to improve on the, uh, on the experience that the audience and the performers. This is one of the things that sets us apart, is that we try to create a magical experience for the audience. That's my wife's job and her team. And then my job is to try and make the performer's experience a magical experience. And so I, tr I for example, I have the whole back line. So not only do we have a stage and a piano, but the drum set, the bass amps, plural, guitar amps, and the double bass, uh, which is world famous. Uh, for a reason, because then people from all over the world, when I tell them, like, they're always reluctant, oh, playing a house bass, I don't know. Oh, it's, you know, uh, uh, Doug Matthews played it with Sam Rivers Trio for decades. Oh, I know that bass, I tried it when he was in Tokyo, blah, blah, blah. And so they're f fearless when they come, they know that it's a good instrument, and so forth. And so we have, like, uh, from congas and everything, like, we, we really, when, usually when the band comes in to set up, the stage is ready, all the mics are up, the setup is done, all they need to do is sit down, get their sticks out and play. And so that's important. I also take care of my own piano. And so the piano is very important. My wife plays piano. And so in Montreal, uh, that's the, the first room I 
did was our living room, and there were two grand pianos in the living room, but they were old and they were um, not, you know, world-class pianos. So we decided to sell those. And so when I got here, I started shopping and I got her a good piano. So it's a handmade piano, uh, ancestor to the Shigeru Kawai line of pianos. And I regulate the action. I change the hammers regularly. I change the strings regularly. I tune it myself. I do all of that kind of stuff. So we've been blessed with hosting musicians from all over the world, top-notch musicians from Russia, uh, from the United States, from uh, Iceland, everywhere. She's from Taiwan. Um, uh, Israel is in there. So, you know, um, and the, the blessing, like, it, it, it works both ways, right? So the blessing is for us, and the blessing is for them. Uh, Many, many times, like, I've, you know, people that I've been admiring for decades uh, as players, they come to the house and I finally, I'm excited and, you know, I do my best for them to have a good experience and then they finish and it's like, oh my God, I can't believe this place. I've never played in a place like this, which is so encouraging for us to continue because it's not always easy, certainly money-wise. Uh, now, organization-wise, we're getting much, much stronger. Because for the first 15 years of this whole adventure, I had a great job. I conducted the Cirque du Soleil show and it paid well and I could pay for the whole, this whole thing myself. I never asked anybody for money. But now this is no longer the case. The show closed. I don't have a job. I do this full time. So now money is not as easy as it was, but uh, we're doing great, actually, I, surprisingly. There's a good example of a grumpy old man. Uh, <laughs> Peter Brutzman, he's from, uh, he, 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 he's an Austrian, he, he lives in Austria, but he's a German. But he's played, he used to play with Sam Rivers in the 60s. He's toured the world, he's a free jazz saxophone player. Um, and he's notoriously grumpy and uh, hard to please. And he's been at the house three or four times now. The first time he came was with Joe McPhee, the picture you saw uh, on the earlier frame. And um, somebody flew from Boston to see that show. And, um, and he told me after, he says, I've been following Peter Brutzman since the early 70s. I've, everywhere in the US, everywhere he goes, I fly and I go there. I've never seen him smile. He was smiling, beaming. The whole time he was playing, after he was playing, he was beaming. I don't know, it's the first time I meet the man. I don't know. But, and he told his manager after this, every time I come to the US, the North, the West, okay, but I don't want to play in the South anywhere but in this house. So now he doesn't play in Atlanta, doesn't play in anywhere. <laughs> he plays at my house, that's it. So he'll play like New York, Montreal, Seattle, Chicago, and my house. <laughs> and then he goes back to Europe. It's pretty cool. So uh, this is just like uh, uh, basically our space, our. Uh, Many people have come to think of our space as a sacred space, uh, both audience and performers. Um, and so we're so lucky that that's happened because in fact, the, I don't know how to say that, but the, the, the tail wagged the dog this whole time. Like basically, the, we were led, life led us to do this. We had no big vision, now we do. We have a vision, we want to become the, leading chamber arts organization in the South. And we're on our way to do that. Uh, and the Timucua Arts Foundation. Now, it's easy to find online, timucua.com. We hope that you will, if you've never been, you, you should come. Saturday, Sunday, we have another concert. Ne the Friday following that is a, a, a Polish pianist. Uh, it doesn't stop. I mean, basically, the, we went from, I don't know, 15 events the first year. This coming year, we have 92 events and things keep, we, we're limited to 100, but things keep booking like I basically I'm going to have to say no after eight more. So, uh, and people have started booking 2021. So this is how far people book ahead because they want to get a date at the house because it's getting more and more difficult, which is why we started a new Saturday afternoon series, monthly Saturday afternoon series for student and local groups because we always want to keep this local connection for the performers, there's a chance for local performers to play in the place that they deserve to play in. And so um, hopefully you'll make it and thank you very much.